Greetings and welcome. Thank you for taking the time today to listen to my Problem of Practice dissertation. My name is Christopher Lambert and under the faculty advisement of Dr. Sarah Smitherman Pratt at Baylor University, I am presenting my dissertation entitled An Intrinsic Single Case Study Exploring How STEM Residential High School Enrollment Managers Are Changing Recruitment Strategies to Increase Unrepresented Minorities in the Applicant Pool. Today, I will be going over the following agenda items for my problem of practice dissertation. I will be talking about the statement of the problem, an overview of literature review, purpose statement, research question, theoretical framework, methodology, overview of findings, implications and recommendations, distribution plan, and references. And here I'm providing a list of abbreviations that you will come in contact or hear me say or see on the screen throughout my presentation. I want to highlight SRHS, which is STEM Residential High School, STEM, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, URM, which stands for Underrepresented Minorities, and to also define a word you will hear, STEM Pipeline, which is a metaphor for students enrolled in STEM courses and programming who will continue cultivating interest to be STEM majors in college and persist into STEM professions. Statement of the problem. Underrepresented minorities comprise 23% of employees in STEM occupations. This disparity underscores the imperative to implement measures for enhancing URM representation in the STEM pipeline. STEM residential high schools are significant contributors to the STEM pipeline and the need to increase underrepresented minority enrollment impacts the STEM pipeline's capacity to foster diversity in college majors and professions within STEM fields. Overview of literature review. I organized my literature into five parts. Disparities of minorities in STEM career fields, crucial role of STEM residential high schools to STEM pipeline, advancement of STEM education, STEM identity formation, early access and exposure to STEM. My overview demonstrates the need for my problem of practice research and how my problem of practice research contributes to the scholarly conversation. The literature review spoke about disparities of minorities in STEM fields bringing attention to the need for diversity in the STEM pipeline to decrease the representation gap between URM and white and Asian populations in STEM. The literature review also presented the crucial role of STEM residential high schools as being contributors to the STEM pipeline, highlighting the relevance of their inception and how STEM residential high schools foster greater persistence of students to STEM careers. Advancement of STEM education was presented in response to the declines in diversity to engender the prioritization of funding nationwide STEM opportunities. My research also adds to the gap in existing literature that shares a variety of studies supporting how and the ways to progress URM's URM populations into the STEM pipeline, but the gap exists in the strategy formation to utilize all this existing knowledge to create a strategy specifically for STEM residential high schools, so the research is contributing to that strategy formation. Next, the literature review presented the importance of STEM identity formation for being attributed to a URM student's interest, selection, and persistence in STEM. Finally, the literature review demonstrated how STEM residential high schools mitigate social identity threats to hinder STEM identity formation. STEM residential high schools achieve this by cultivating STEM identities through early access and exposure to STEM, employing constructivist education, providing mentored research opportunities, offering immersive experiences, and ensuring college preparedness, all of which contribute to greater persistence into the STEM pipeline. The Purpose Statement the purpose of this qualitative intrinsic single case study was to examine how STEM residential high school enrollment managers are changing recruitment strategies for underrepresented minority students. The research question for my dissertation is how do STEM residential high school enrollment managers describe changes in recruitment strategies for underrepresented minority populations? The theoretical framework used for this intrinsic qualitative case study was Lewin's Changing as Three Steps, or CATS model, initially pioneered in 1947. CATS entails recognizing barriers to goal attainment and orchestrates three phases, unfreeze, change, and freeze, or in some studies is noted as refreeze. The CATS model involves 
the unfreeze stage to unfreeze the status quo, bringing awareness of the disruptive forces impeding the achievement of goals, and the change stage requires an iteration or repeated iterations of action research cycle, which involves evaluation, diagnosis, planning, and facilitation of action. The cycle of action research is crucial to change as this is when data is collected, evaluated, and assessed until the signs of progress of change and revised mindsets are strongly evident before moving to the final stage. After examining the field of STEM research related to residential high schools, I determined that the first two steps of CATS, namely unfreezing and changing, would inform the purpose of this study and the third step of freezing extends beyond the purview of the purpose of this study. The research design for my study is a qualitative intrinsic single case study. I chose an intrinsic single case study because State coined the term intrinsic case study for research aimed at understanding a specific case that is significant in its own right. This type of study focused on the unique characteristics of the case without the intention of generalizing findings to other cases. The intrinsic case study is particularly relevant when the case is primary of primary interest and holds dominant significance. This approach was ideal for my research to understand a specific population of STEM residential high school enrollment managers. STEM residential high school enrollment managers represent a unique group with no analogous counterparts, making them an intrinsically unique case to study. My site and participants include seven STEM residential high school enrollment managers from six different STEM residential high schools. Selection criteria included purposeful criterion sampling in which I looked at those schools that had to offer STEM focused curricula and a requirement of students to live on campus. They had to be members of the National Consortium of Secondary STEM Schools NCSSS membership, and they had to associate and participate in the admissions consortium, which is a monthly meeting where a variety of enrollment managers from other NCSSS member schools come together to discuss admissions and recruitment. Finally, my data collection included semi-structured interviews, archival records, and marketing documents. An overview of my findings revealed the emergence of five themes. Data-informed approaches, meeting students where they are, exposure and access to STEM experiences, cultural responsiveness, and holistic and inclusive recruitment. Data-informed approaches are necessary for increasing institutional accountability to increase the enrollment of URM students. The theme of data-informed approaches was informed by the categories of data management and data-driven decision-making. The thematic assertion that developed from the data was that data-informed approaches are necessary for increasing institutional accountability to increase the enrollment of URM students. Data-driven approaches to URM recruitment optimize data sharing, strategic planning, and institutional accountability, ensuring alignment with URM enrollment goals and accountability for stakeholders. Meeting students where they are requires adapting recruitment strategies to reach and engage students effectively regardless of their backgrounds or circumstances, to increase the enrollment of URM students. The theme of meeting students where they are was informed by the categories of authentic engagement, fostering relationships, and intentional assignment of recruitment territories and teams. Authentic engagement fosters relationships and intentional assignment of recruitment teams as promoting a personalized approach to recruitment. Early exposure and access to STEM by creating strategic partnerships increases the enrollment of URM students. The category of STEM engagement informs the theme of early exposure and access to STEM. Early exposure and access allow URM students to explore their interests, develop essential skills, and build confidence in their abilities. Providing URM students with opportunities to engage in STEM activities and projects early in recruitment strategies will help foster STEM identity and increase URM interest in STEM residential high schools. Cultural responsiveness is necessary for advancing STEM residential living and learning environments to increase the enrollment of URM students. The category Acknowledgement and Recognition of Diverse Cultures inform the theme of cultural responsiveness. The data supports participants' connections with cultural responsiveness for advancing STEM residential living and learning communities and environments. 
the approach of providing cultural responsiveness to STEM curricula and residential programming engenders changes in recruitment strategies to increase URM enrollment. Holistic and inclusive recruitment strategies remove barriers to increase the enrollment of URM students. The categories diversity and inclusion initiatives and external contributors to internal processes inform the creation of the theme of holistic and inclusive recruitment strategies. Prioritizing inclusivity and considering the diverse needs of URM students, STEM residential high schools can develop more effective recruitment strategies. Connections to literature. My findings nearly affirmed all extant literature. The findings of data-informed approaches connects to various literature by participants such as Bicer and Gahazi research to emphasize the leveraging of data to create targeted programming and strategies to increase your own persistence in the STEM pipeline. The findings of meeting students where they are connects to literature by participants' connections to the studies by Dow and Cyan and Archer for fostering intentional and authentic recruitment strategies to recognize experiences and backgrounds of URM populations. The findings of exposure and access to STEM expressed by participants connects to literature such as Davenport's, whose findings stated that importance of STEM identity formation through immersive experiences leads to the persistence into the STEM pipeline. The findings of cultural responsiveness expressed by participants connects to literature such as Johnson and Elliott, and Lisberg and Woods that emphasizes the importance of the recognition of backgrounds, experiences, and culture in strategies creates a diverse mindset in pedagogy, mentorship, and mentored research, enhancing persistence in STEM to create a STEM identity. The final findings of holistic and inclusive recruitment by participants connects to the literary findings such as those by Basil and Black and Caldwell on the importance of connections with urine populations requiring authentic relationships to establish connections to consider all aspects of URM student identities. Recommendations for this study extend to three stakeholders who can advance the findings to curtail challenges and barriers participants experienced while recruiting URM students to STEM residential high schools. For the Board of Trustees, I recommend that the Board of Trustees members actively participate and raise awareness about recruiting more URM students to STEM residential high schools to make diverse contributions to the STEM pipeline. Collaborating with the executive leadership team and enrollment teams is crucial for improving the recruitment of URM students. The Board of Trustees must and should leverage their networks, resources, and guidance to support the implementation of the five actionable changes. For the executive leadership team, I recommend that executive leadership teams rally all facets of the STEM residential high school towards embracing a culture of change, fostering inclusive environments conducive to meeting students where they are, to increase URM student recruitment. This will require an unwavering commitment and readiness to take decisive actions to present a cohesive front, steering the school towards the necessary changes to enhance campus diversity. For the enrollment managers, I recommend that they adopt the five actionable changes to improve recruitment of URM students. Enrollment managers need to train recruitment teams to have a diversity-focused mindset for effective student engagement and meaningful conversations. Instead of simply presenting information to save them, but instead focus on building trusting relationships, meeting students where they are. The target audience for distributing the findings of my research include the Board of Trustees, Executive Leadership Teams, and Enrollment Managers. The venue for distributing the findings to the Board of Trustees will be during their first quarterly Board of Trustees meeting. For the ELT, it will be during their weekly meetings. And for the Enrollment Managers, it will be during the monthly Admissions Consortium meeting. For stakeholder meetings, I plan for all, all stakeholders that I, I shared that I will hold a structured session, a concise 15-minute presentation followed by a 15-minute forum discussion. The presentation will encompass the study's objectives, research questions, and pivotal findings. Another venue for distributing the findings on a broader scale will be attending and presenting at the National Consortium of Secondary STEM Schools which focuses on connection and collaboration among professionals in STEM education. The yearly NCSSS conference is ideal for presenting my proposal for actionable approaches for improving URM recruitment strategies. I plan on hosting a 45-minute session, followed by a roundtable discussion, and an experience gallery where attendants can collaboratively share ideas inspired by the presentation to implement the findings to improve their URM enrollment strategies. 
Here are my references supporting my research written in the tiniest font possible. I want to thank you for your time today to listen to my problem of practice and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much.